Hello, everybody. The time has come, and I am back to answer those questions from the Q&A video. Sorry if there's no face cam or effects or anything flashy, but um, I hope that some of my answers are going to be interesting at least. To help everyone out, I've added timestamps into the description, as well as the questions. So if you want to skip ahead and jump into anything specific, uh, you can do that. So with that being said, let's go! Uh, I'm just going to drink some water. <clears throat> Alright, so... First question is, uh, what is your favorite gen? Okay, so we're starting off with the Pokemon question. Good to know that my fan base hasn't changed much. Um, Alright, so giving it some thought, uh, Gen 4 is definitely a close second. I, I know it's one of the less liked generations uh, for some reason. Uh, I, could, I could talk to someone about that all day, all night. Um, but Gen 4 has a... Uh, a really good premise and it also has a really good soundtrack to boot like one of the things that I love the most about fourth gen is how heartful all the compositions are uh, it it seems to have like this extra layer of soul and heart and just it has a really good vibe giving out there it, there's a lot of jazz there's a lot of soulful ones um, gen 4 soundtrack is definitely one of the best I'd say and the whole uh, premise is definitely something that's really grand with um, the Alga and Palkia and like the whole concept of God and all those kind of cool stuff. Uh, Gen 4 is definitely something that I hold really close to. Um, but funny enough, uh, the first Gen 4 game I played was actually Diamond and not Platinum. Uh, I know Platinum's better. I've watched gameplay and I've also played it myself a little bit. Um, but if I were to pick a go-to game just because of nostalgia and childhood, I'm I'm gonna have to go for a Diamond. Uh, it's a really well-polished game. It established um, different uh, special and physical attacks and um, Wi-Fi. So it's definitely a really big turning point for Pokemon, and that I really like. But if I were to talk about a favorite Gen, um, it has to be Gen 5. Again, unpopular com uh, like opinion. I'm sure a lot of people is gonna be like, "No, we're not. We're not gonna be liking. We're we're not talking about the gen where there's an ice cream Pokemon, or a garbage Pokemon, like literal garbage Pokemon. You know what I'm talking about." Uh, and they're like, "No, I can't like that gen. It has the weirdest designs." And okay, sure, there's gonna be a lot of designs that are weird, uh, unique, but. If you put that aside and just analyze the game as a whole, you realize how much depth there is. Like, there, there's so much interesting things. There's there's a lot of interesting things going on in Gen 5 that I just, again, I can go on for weeks. But the whole concept of truth and ideals feels like a step up from, let's say, a uh, battle of land and water, or a battle of space and time and... Uh, distortion and god and y you know what I'm talking about like uh, for a Pokemon game actually going into abstract concepts like uh, truth and ideals is really interesting to me and for once we have a villain that's multi-dimensional he tries to well spoiler alert but I mean Gen 5 has been around for a long time so I, I, I hope I'm not spoiling anything for a lot of you there's a whole villain about creating a facade um, and acting like, okay, we're gonna liberate all Pokemon, but it turns out there's a sinister um, idea uh, and ulterior motive um, at the back. And there's an interesting character of N, and there, it, as, as a kid, I really did question a lot of these things. Like, should we actually liberate Pokemon? Is it nice to keep Pokemon with us? Is it, uh, should we, should we um, let them go and uh, set them free in order to get them, like, uh, to, to, to give them happiness? And a lot of these concepts were really interesting to me. And Gen 5 soundtrack is also really good. Um, has a lot of heart put into it. And it's very diverse in the terms of like style and feel. And one extra thing, one last thing that brought Gen 5 to the top of my list is Black and White 2. Black and White 2 is phenomenal in my opinion. Like it um when it turn when it comes to evil teams, maybe not as interesting as like Team Plasma from Black and White 1, 
But the whole dynamic about like, okay, old Team Plasma is fighting new Team Plasma is kind of interesting. And they added a whole new like a uh, whole new section of the region. Like there's a lot more stuff that you can do. Uh, the world tournament is really, really fun. Uh, one of the only like end game-ish content out of a Pokemon game that I really, really spent time in because I just wanted to fight these old champions, you know? And the whole region being frozen, like, whew, what a story. Um, Black and White 2 essentially took what's good from Black and White, um, added more music, added more scenarios, added like the intensity, and just brought it to a whole new level in my opinion. Again, my opinion. You can argue with me, uh, you can debate with me, but Gen 5 is my favorite. Uh, and also, Gen 5, um, Black and White 2's ending theme is one of my favorite like ending themes of all time. Like, if you haven't listened to it recently, I definitely recommend listening to it again. Um, partially because for me, it sounded really poetic in a sense that it was the last um, credit scene, uh, like credit theme uh, of the DS era. Uh, it was like you're saying goodbye to the DS era of Pokemon, and that really struck me when I was playing it. I was like, oh god, there's no more games on the DS anymore. Uh, of course, like it's something to look forward to, but then again, X and Y. Uh... Well, you know what I mean, so it was kind of poetic for its time. So there you have it. Best gen is Gen 5, and second best gen is Gen 4. And another, uh, like, un um, another unpopular opinion. I do not like Gen 3 as much as a lot of people do. <laughs> uh, I know I'm going to get killed and roasted, but I don't like Gen 3 as much. <sighs> too much water, IGN. Okay, so uh, question 2. Uh, nationality, because just some general information, someone's curious. Uh, favorite color, favorite food, and general information. Okay, so I am Chinese, uh, but I've been in Hong Kong the entire time, so you can call me a Hong Konger or like Hong Kong, Hong kong -y. There's not really much of a term for that, but uh, if you want to talk about like blood and stuff like that, like uh, by blood, I am Chinese. And um, yeah, so there you have it, it's kind of straightforward. Um, I, I lived in Hong Kong for essentially all my entire life until I was like 19 and then I moved to Vancouver, Canada, which is where I am now, uh, to pursue studies. But it just so happens that I think the school isn't necessarily the most fitting for me, so I might look uh, for somewhere else. Um, and I'm probably going to go to London. Uh, so I'm just kind of going around the world with and just learning stuff and hopefully it'll get me somewhere because Hong Kong's music industry is tiny. That's one of the primary reasons why I wanted to get somewhere else because uh, in Hong Kong you don't really have much of a chance to uh, be famous. Uh, Hong Kong is too small and its own music industry is too confined in a sense that if you're going to get famous you're only going to get famous in Hong Kong. You're not going to get beyond that. So it's kind of sad. But what, what can you do when your tiny country is basically its own standalone region with its own economic system and law? Hong Kong is Hong Kong's interesting. Like, it's definitely worth visiting. Just not a good place to live because of its sky-high prices. Don't do it. Okay, so favorite color would be... Uh, it's kind of obvious. Blue. Um, but if I want to be more specific, it's going to be cyan or teal. Uh, a bit of mix of... Like, somewhere in between blue and green. Um... And it's kind of funny because my original favorite color as a kid uh, was orange, so it's basically the other side of the color spectrum. And yeah, I like blue now, and then I guess maybe black, green, not too sure there, it's basically anything blue. Uh, favorite food would have to be... <sighs> don't do this to me. Um, steak is good, ramen is good, sushi is good, sashimi is good. Risotto is good. I can't really tell you my favorite because a lot of the good stuff is only good if you have in moderation, so I kind of go on a cycle, you know? So those are good stuff. Um, recently got a craving for tacos. Chipotle is kind of decent. <laughs> um, and anything else? Um, not really. Uh, I feel old as a 20 year old. I'm kind of old, but the number two is really deceiving. Uh, I certainly don't feel 20. <laughs> Still kind of a kid at heart, so that's uh, that's a thing. And 
yeah, I guess so. I, I mean, I can't really think of anything else, so moving on. What inspired me to make music? Uh, okay, so this is kind of... This is kind of a deep question that dates back to my childhood. So, when I was a wee kid um, in elementary school or primary school, um, depending on where you're from, uh, times were not good for me. I was like kind of in this mediocre school where uh, yeah, it's just a lot of bad kids. Like a lot of bad kids that were uh, essentially like four years older than I was. Uh, they had to stay uh, in the same grade for three times because they didn't pass. Like those kind of like naughty like kids with really bad upbringings. Like we're, we're, I'm, not, I'm not dragging, I, I'm, not, I'm not elaborating on that. But essentially some really really bad bullies were giving me a hard time. Um, and I was too nice of a kid to say no so I was like being used all over the place. But essentially times were bad. And I didn't exactly know what to do um, during those times. And so what my mom did to cheer me up, sort of, was to take me to musicals, um, like stage musicals, like plays and stuff like that with the songs and stuff. And they were entertaining. They were musicals, not not much of a grand scale, like not, we're not talking about Phantom of the Opera, more like original, smaller, fun musicals from local um, uh, groups. And... Uh, they were basically directed to kids, and I would enjoy them. I I, I, I enjoyed them a lot. Like I, I would walk out of the uh, the the theater feeling a lot better, and that happened multiple times over the course of a few years, and that really slowly got to me in the sense that I started having this dream, and I told my mom that mom, I wanted to do theater. I wanted to do music. I want to write plays that could make people happy. I, I want to make music that could affect other people and make them smile. That was genuinely what I said. It was cheesy. So that led to me pursuing theater at first. I wanted to write plays, which led to me being like an okay writer. Um, but then I realized maybe acting wasn't my strongest suit. Uh, maybe writing, I, I, I might be okay at writing, but I don't think that's where my talent lied. Um, so I swapped to music after some time. Uh, this is only a possible because my mom allowed me to switch to a different high school that's an international high school with a larger variety of courses. Because back then my local high school was kind of shitty, no offense high school, but they only had science, so you're going into this school totally expecting to study science like physics, chemistry, and biology, and yeah, essentially you're doing the Asian way where you're going out there as a doctor or something similar. Uh, there were no, uh, there were no chances for um, music or theater, which is why I managed um, to convince my mom to swap. Bless my mom, um, and that got me on the path of making music which eventually led me here to Canada. So it's it's a very long story, but essentially I was given a really hard time by a lot of my uh, classmates in the past. And after seeing plays and musicals that cheered me up, I wanted to do something similar. I wanted to make music that could affect people emotionally and make them feel good or sad and something therapeutic. So. Musical therapy is kind of also a thing that I might be interested in, but there you go. That inspired me to make music as a kid, and that has not changed ever since. Um, I've been making music still because I want to make people feel. I want to evoke emotion. I, I don't want to like just make a really uh, upbeat um, techno remix. Uh, I, I guess, in a sense, like people get really pumped up, but I've always been more of a fan of emotional things. Like, this theme makes me feel mellow, or at ease, or something like that. Music theory. But, there you have it. That's what inspired me to make music as, as a kid. Alright. Okay, is there a composer you like? Question four. Um, this could also lead towards uh, favorite soundtracks and kind of stuff like that. So, I don't have a favorite composer per se, but I'd like to think a lot of composers out there are equally capable of creating good content. I do, however, have favorite soundtracks. That's a little bit different. Just because it's like a really nice compilation of everything. So, 
Um, oh gosh, okay. Favorite soundtracks of all time would definitely have to be some from Pokemon, Explorers of Sky, uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, um, Pokemon Black and White 2 as I mentioned before, and Pokemon Diamond also. Uh, Persona 5 is really good because it's not only your typical JRPG like music but it also has a lot of style put into it so that's definitely one of my favorites. Undertale has one of my favorite soundtracks of all time as well. Um, a very surprising yet very pleasant addition to my favorites list would be Xenoblade Chronicles 2, uh, which I'm going to talk about more um, in the next, well, in the in question six, basically. I'm going to talk about Xenoblade Chronicles 2 later on as to why I really dig it. But uh, if I want to talk about the soundtrack itself uh, in uh, Xenoblade 2, um, it is a perfect blend of JRPG overworld music. So rising flutes, soaring strings, uh, some choirs here and there, really good emotional responses there. And it also has a really, really nice blend of battle music. There's not a single battle theme in the game that I do not like. Even in Pokemon, sometimes if you overhear things, or there might be like a theme or two that I don't actually like as much. Um, on, a, on a side note, like for example, Black and White 2, yeah, I love its soundtrack to bits, but I'm not actually a big fan of its Elite Four theme. Which I know I'm gonna get roasted and burnt again because it's one of everyone's favorites, but it's not one of my favorites. But that just proves that Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has a really likable soundtrack. There hasn't been any like theme in the game that I don't like yet, and it's amazing in that sense. It's it's your typical JRPG with a bit of an anime charm and. Listen to the soundtrack, please. It, it is so good. Listen to the battle themes, listen to the overworld themes. There's one overworld theme that is my absolute favorite, and, 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 and if you want to look it up, it, it's, um, it's called More Ardain, uh, Roaming the Wastes. Um, and it is definitely one of my favorite overworld tracks of all time. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention another game. Uh, Ace Attorney. Definitely Ace Attorney. Um, Ace Attorney taught me a lot of things about making music because back then was when Ace Attorney was still on the G uh, GBA, I think. Um, there were a lot of hardware limitations and kind of like chiptune in a sense, you had to make use of your limitations and what you had and create something that was still very effective. And Ace Attorney nailed it. In a lot of those suspenseful tracks and a lot of those sinister tracks, even the lighthearted tracks, they were simple but very effective at what it, they were doing, and I learned a lot from those. Uh, Ace Attorney, definitely one of the best soundtracks out there. Um, yeah, definitely. I don't have a very specific favorite composer, but favorite soundtracks, there you go. Uh, I'm sure there's like some others on the top of my head, like Breath of the Wild, but... Uh, these are the biggest ones that I've thought of right now, so that says something. Alright, so question 5. What are your inspirations when it comes to making originals? How do I do it? And also any tips for other, like, other remixers or composers? Okay, so when making originals, uh, there are two directions that I normally take. One is uh, I want to make the overall theme and like vibe and atmosphere first. And I essentially try to uh, make a beat or a rhythm that would create this vibe and uh, feeling, essentially. And I would work from there and add some melodies and add some motifs, but it's still geared towards that specific feeling. Uh, this hones back to my um, previous like thought about making music because I want to make people feel. So I establish a certain feel, think about how to do it, and then develop it from there. Uh, my other direction would be melody-based. So if I come up with a nice melody during the shower, or like this nice rhythmic motif, then I would um, input that to the very beginning of the theme, and then I would develop it, I would work the theme around it, and I would develop the rhythm and vibe then. So. Um, it's either to think about like what kind of vibe or theme I want and then uh, make a melody and rhythm around it or make a melody and a rhythm and then add a like atmosphere and theming around that. So that's my 
two like approaches generally. And um, as were any tips for other remixers or composers in the scene, well, I don't really want to say much because I know I'm not big at all. I'm nowhere near big, and I don't think I deserve to be that much bigger at the time being. But um, if I were to give advice to any anyone that's starting out, um, I'd say. I'd say do things that you absolutely love doing over views or hype or anything like that. It's good to follow hype uh, from time to time because that's how you gain views, sadly. That's how YouTube works. But don't forget to also work on themes that you absolutely love. And when you do that, really pour your heart into it and make it something special and make it your own. And really... Um, show your emotions and your fondness of this theme through your interpretation of music and never stop trying never stop making I know for one that I have inspiration and motivation in bursts sometimes I stop for a long time and then sometimes I just keep working at it on uh, for days on end and that's okay the most important thing is you still enjoy doing what you're doing and that's really all that matters. Enjoy what you're doing. Reach out to other people. Talk to the people that you uh, admire or respect or you want to learn from. And if they respond to you, work together. Ask for some advice. If they're nice, they would help you out. And yeah, be true to your own style. Um, develop your own style, but don't try and limit yourself within that style. Try to branch out, which is what I'm trying to do recently. And yeah, um... Keep practicing, keep learning how to improve your content, and eventually you're going to have breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. I had like five breakthroughs to get here, and I'm still nowhere near where I wanted to be. But looking back at my stuff four years ago, yeah, I've gone a long way, admittedly. And I believe everyone can do the same. As long as you spend time and put effort into your work, you're going to get there eventually. Um, and yeah, that's that's it. Alright, so, question 6. One of my favorite games of all time. So some of my favorite game soundtracks have probably spoiled this already, um, but uh, I essentially have basically a, like a top 10 list, and then a top 5 list within the top 10. And there is no specific order, because sometimes they fluctuate. Uh, I do know games that are within top 10 would be Undertale, some Pokemon games, um, Ace Attorney would be somewhere in there. Um, a lot of Nintendo titles, honestly. Um, a lot of Zelda games as well. Wind Waker HD, Wind Waker, top 10. Um, but if I were to talk about top 5, I know 3 of them. Uh, the other 5, oh, well, the other 2 actually, um, are kind of like going in and out. Like, I can't really give you a very specific list as to what my favorite games would be because they would change over time. But top Five definitely would contain Pokemon Black and White 2, Pokemon, no, not Pokemon, what am I talking about? Zelda Breath of the Wild, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Um, not really much of a surprise there with Breath of the Wild, but it is such an amazing experience that you get to do, and if you're playing with friends, even better. It's... It, it, it is so good, like, it completely exceeded my expectations, and then some. Because it's not, not, it's not like your other, like, ordinary Zelda game anymore. It, it, it opened up the world to you, and yet it still contained the typical Zelda charm, and I fell in love with the characters, even the champions, and the whole gameplay, the whole physics engine, everything was a blast to play through, and for the first time in a long, long time, uh, my friend and I had to jot down notes with some shrines or some overworld puzzles. Like, there were some things that we had to write down and then solve later on. When was the last time I did that? Like, it's it's been so long, I think. At least 10 years, because nowadays you can either cheat or you can look it up online and that's it, right? For Breath of the Wild, we... I liked to keep that sense of adventure, and instead of looking everything up online, we wrote things down, and we at least we sketched out ideas, and we wrote down puzzles, and we drew a maze, and and it was so good. It was such a good time. And Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Oh, okay. I know this is not going to be a lot of people's favorite favorite game. It it's. 
definitely for a very niche audience, but this is what I can say about the game. I, w I went in expecting a really good time and it absolutely delivered. And it is just a really, really charming game. If you like anime, if you like JRPG, then this is one of the best JRPGs in this current era, in this current generation. Definitely one of the best. Not in the sense of epicness, even though it is there. Even though there's a lot of like sense of scale and there's like a sense of wonder and beauty and the entire the entire game is huge, like jaw-droppingly huge. And it is there, but I think a lot of the charm comes within, well, the charm of the game itself. Lovable, lovable characters. Really, really good voice acting. I like their English dub actually a lot because they, instead of making it a really like typical dub, uh, like in anime dubs, they gave everyone kind of like a Scottish, Gaelic, Nordic accent and that adds to the authenticity. And it's a really good time, it has a really good combat mechanic, uh, it has a lot of side quests that you can bond with your characters with, and the entire story has sucked me in and it is essentially the pinnacle or the accumulation of good JRPG and anime elements. It is so anime it hurts and that's that's beautiful. My friend described this game as a hot mess but in the most endearing way and as long as you don't take the story too seriously because it doesn't, um, you're gonna have a really good time. As long as you're willing to look through the flaws and really embrace the inner geekiness and your inner child you're gonna fall in love with the characters, you're gonna fall in love with the story, you're gonna fall in love with everything in this game, and it is worth your every penny. I have synced so many hours into it, and get the game. If you have a Switch, get the game. You, you really need it. And, uh, oh yeah, right. Uh, top 5. Uh, Odyssey is probably in top 5, but the reason why I thought about Odyssey again is because, well, it's Masterpiece, um, and the reason why I wanted to bring up Odyssey is not to step on it or anything. It's my favorite Mario game of all time right now, and it's just full of childlike wonder. But I put Xenoblade Chronicles 2 over Odyssey, and that says a lot. I absolutely loved Odyssey, and Xenoblade is somehow above that. So if that says anything, do consider getting the game. If you're into anime or JRPG at all, get it. Okay, so, um, last question. Do I like pineapple on pizza? Trick question. Is there stuffed crust for the pizza? I don't really care about pineapple. Like, if it's if there's pineapple on the pizza, I'm gonna eat it. If there's no pineapple on the pizza, I'm still gonna eat it. Like, but I really like stuffed crust. <laughs> and it's funny, because I think only Pizza Hut has it. But you know what, Pizza Hut? Because of your stuffed crust, you've got a frequent customer. So there you have it, uh, age-long debate on whether or not pineapple uh, should be on pizza. I don't care, as long as there's stuffed crust. <laughs> um, so those are the seven questions. Uh, and if you have any other questions um, that I haven't answered, uh, please either leave a comment on the video, or even better, follow me on Twitter at Eternal Sushi and contact me directly, like tweet to me. I'm always on Twitter. I'm on Twitter daily, so if you want to talk to me, I, 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 I'm, I'm there. Doors always open. So uh, I hope this was not too much of a bore fest. It's almost basically a 30 minute video, but I hope it was enjoyable to some degree. And yeah, get Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It's my current like favorite game right now. I'm, I am playing it so much and I am such a geek and a nerd for gushing over the game, but get it. And uh, thank you so much for being a fan for so long. Thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you so much for believing in me and really appreciating my content. I put hours and hours into every single piece of music that I make and I really hope that shows. And thank you for all your support. Have a good day, everyone. <laughs>